Konnichiwa everyone, it's Y again. In today's video, I want to do a comparison between the US and the Japan release of Halo Combat Evolved. And just to preface this before we start, I don't read or speak any Japanese, so just keep that in mind during the comparison. On the left, we have the Japanese release, and on the right, we have the US release. So the first thing we notice right away when comparing the games side by side is that they don't have the same cover art. My guess as to why they made this change, they probably just felt it would sell better with a different art style on the front. In fact, that's not too uncommon between regions to have different cover art. The next thing that caught my eye is that the Japanese release removed the Combat Evolved subtitle, which leaves the title as simply just being Halo. Now if we flip them both over to the side and check their spine, they both simply just read Halo. Neither have the Combat Evolved subtitle here. Now there's a lot of text on the back of both of these, and since I can't read Japanese, and my translator app wasn't really helpful, I'm just going to have to assume they both say similar things. You'll notice they both have a similar layout with three pictures at the bottom, the first of which shows Chief and a Grunt, the second shows an Elite and the Chief getting into a gunfight, and the third shows a Scorpion tank with some Marines on it. And if we look back at the US version, it prominently shows Chief driving a Warthog with the Marine gunning in the back, and even though both cases share the same layout with three images at the bottom, only the middle image is the same between the two. Now let's go ahead and open them both up and see what's inside. Now I might be missing a booklet for the US version that showed off other games at the time, but I'm pretty sure I have everything that came with the Japanese version. Instantly you can tell they use different art for the disc covers, with the Japanese version using more of an artistic style compared to the US which shows more gameplay elements such as vehicles and enemies. Now if we take a closer look at the bottom of the disc, it says, in English, Code Spartan 1-1 Project, which is Roman numeral for 2, which must mean Spartan Project number 2. And here's a closer look at both the discs side by side. And if you'll notice, the US version, once again, just like the spine of the case, does not have the subtitles Combat Evolved. Now let's go through the little booklets that come with the games. First up, let's take a look at the Japanese version. Okay, front and center we have this little white slip of paper. Looks like it's just an ad for the Xbox website. Nothing on the back. Here's the training book, which I'm pretty sure the US version never came with. So this training book is essentially a guide to get you through the first level of the campaign. You see down here it has a little map legend for the ammo, health, overshield, and enemies. And what you do is follow this mapped out trail and it'll guide you through the first level. And what this booklet does is cuts the first level into a few different sections, which if you look on the side of the page it says map 1, 2, 3, and so on. And here are the last two parts of the first campaign level. And after that level guide is a brief summary of the encounters you come across during the level. This page basically talks about being awoken from your cryosleep and going through the calibration process for your aiming. In this one, you can see the tech that wakes you up at the beginning of the level. And here's the calibration tool. This page talks about the captain eating you in the bridge, along with a couple pictures showing you where you go. And this little tip at the bottom basically saying that you need to follow the arrows on the floor. And this just kind of gives you a detailed list of what to do, such as jumping over pipes and going through which doors. Just something interesting to note is that anytime Captain Keys is mentioned, the translator I'm using translated as Captain Keith. Not sure if that's a translator error or maybe they did actually change his name. She has some more instructions to beating the level and a nice picture of Chief with a plasma rifle. Another little interesting translation tidbit is the overshield is referred to as a red orb. And while filming this part I managed to skip over this page so I went back and edited in this photo. The picture on the left shows the stairs you need to take along with the description on how to get there. And on the top right is a picture of the busted door that you can punch open. And on the bottom right it shows a stationary shield generator with a caption that says plasma weapons are needed to break the barrier. And for the last two pages it basically just walks you through the last part of the level with the top picture showing the computer and window that overlooks the cryo chamber room. With the bottom picture showing a barricade and the caption telling you that grenades would be helpful at this part. And the last page of the training book basically just says congratulations for beating level 1. And here's a few tips for how to beat level 2. And finally, it ends with this last blurb asking, who are the Covenant, and what is the purpose of the Halo? And that'll cover the training book that comes with the game. And here's a shot of the back. 
All right, moving on to the next little pamphlet. Okay, so this one's just a little advertising pamphlet that lets you know what games are coming out soon, which for the time was Rally Sport Challenge, Maximum Chase, Project KX, and Jockey's Road. And as we open it up, we see that Xbox has all the hot releases. Let's we'll do a quick look through this pamphlet. So we got Rally Sport Challenge, which is a driving game. Project KX, which is a fighting game. Maximum Chase, another car game. There's another look at that. There's Jockey's Road, which is a horse racer RPG, whatever that is. And here we got Nesmix, Tenku, Project Gotham, and Halo. And that's it for the pamphlet. Let's flip it over, see if there's anything over here. Nope. That's it as a whole. Go ahead and wrap that up. And on to the last piece of the game manual. Let me just get them both out so we can get a better look. And here we go. So the Japanese manual here is on the left, and the US is on the right. So we'll start with the Japanese one here. The first page is just some health warnings, technical jargon, and then there's an index afterwards. And let's compare that to the US version. All right, so the only difference here is actually the picture of the controller, not the controls themselves. And the reason for that is because the controller S was the one that launched with the Xbox in Japan, which is just a smaller version of the original Duke controller. What I'm going to do here is speed this part up because there's no difference between the two except for what language they were written in. Now, for the most part, the manuals have the same exact information, but at the very end, there is a few little differences I'll point out. So if you take a closer look at the bottom manual, which is the Japanese version, it has a much shorter About Bungie section than the U.S. version. Here's both versions of that section, side by side. The Japan version simply states that Bungie created both Marathon and Myth. While the U.S. version also states that Bungie created the Myth and Marathon series, it's much wordier and it also talks about Bungie's goal of hoping to reach total world domination, while also thanking their devoted fans for their support. It's interesting that a lot of that got cut out in the Japanese version. My guess is that they were just worried that things would get lost in translation. Then they both go on to have the U.S. team credits, you flip the next page over, the Japanese one has the Japanese team credits, which is in English, surprisingly enough, and then all the support information on the last page. While the U.S. version ends with the limited warranty and the game tips hotline phone numbers. And they both end with a control scheme with their respective controllers. And that'll do it for the material breakdown between versions. Let's check out the game's actual content. Now the first thing I want to take a look at is the trailer that plays in the main menu when you let the game sit idly. Let's take a look at the US version first. Tracking the case in 30 seconds. Now here's the Japanese release version.
And there you have it. Though overall they are different trailers, they do share some of the same scenes. Also, some of the scenes are from pre-release builds. You can tell by looking at the radar of the gameplay, and you'll notice that piloted vehicles show up as green dots, rather than being a yellow dot for friend or a red dot for enemy. It also looked like Bungie had a little fun with the multiplayer names, with names like Shaxzilla and, well, you get the idea. Now let's take a look at the menu itself. At first glance, you'd think you'd be playing the US version of the game, but once you proceed past the main menu, you'll see that the majority of it is in Japanese. It has all the same options and is laid out just like the US version, with the exception of the controller S taking the Duke's place in the menu any time the controller icon appears, which happens to appear in the menu quite often, so you could say it's a pretty big change. After poking around the menu, I tried to set up a land between both versions, but it didn't work. Now, some of you might remember a feature this game has, where if a player joins a game, they'll be assigned a random name from a predetermined list of names. And here's a list of all the possible names that can be chosen. So what I wanted to see is if the list of names changed in the Japanese version of the game. To test this, I had a second controller plugged in and kept joining and backing out of the game. As you can see, every time I join, the name changes. All these different names show up on that list, which means nothing's changed between versions here. And for the last thing on the game's menu I want to take a look at is the Dot Fortune Easter Egg. If you're not aware of what this Easter Egg is, it's when you name a new profile Dot Fortune instead of giving it a name, which it'll then spit out a phrase. There's a handful of phrases that I can pick from, so here's a list of them. So what I went ahead and did is I created a new profile on the Japanese version and named it Dot Fortune a number of times to see if the fortunes would be the same as they are in the US version. Here's attempt number one. And I get the I like beans, which is on the list. And here's try number two, which gives me smile when you're ready, which is also on the list. And try number three, never wear your best pants when fighting for freedom. And though it is a good one, it's on the list. And while we're on the keyboard, I just want to point out it's impossible to change the characters from English to Japanese, which probably was pretty frustrating for the Japanese market. And now on to the final part of my analysis, gameplay. Unsurprisingly, most of the on-screen prompts have been changed to Japanese. I say mostly because there's still a few left in English. For example, the reload prompt is still in English. I also went to see if some of the smaller details were translated, and as it turns out, they're not. Which, in all honesty, isn't really that big of a deal. And while I was at it, I figured why not check out Easter eggs and see if they were translated. I'm going to take a look at the Meg Easter egg, and if you're not familiar with it, it's essentially a letter M written on the ceiling and I was curious to see if they changed it to be written in Japanese. And as you can see there, it's clearly still in English. With the written stuff out of the way, let's move on to the audio. Here's a scene where you get to hear Chief, Cortana, and Captain Keys all speak. Keys, Captain. Chief, and as expected, they're speaking Japanese. No big shocker there. But what is interesting is that they overlaid a robotic tone to the voice acting of Chief that isn't present in the US version. But what about the enemies? Well, since the grunts are the only enemies that speak English, let's see what they sound like. He's unstoppable! <laughs> the grunts, as well as the rest of the enemy's audio, has been left unchanged. <laughs> now if you want to experience Halo in Japanese, or a few other languages, without the hassle of importing both the game and the console, you can always change the language in MCC. To do so, hit the start button in the main menu, scroll over to settings, then go to audio, change languages, and then choose which language you want for your voice and text. Here I'll change them both to Japanese, giving me the same experience that I would importing the game. After picking both your voice and text language, click accept languages, and it'll change the languages from there. You may be prompted at this point to update MCC, 
That just means you haven't downloaded the selected language and it needs to download that. Since, in this case, I selected both the voice and the text to be in Japanese, which has translated all the English to Japanese. But you can always play with just the voice in Japanese, that way you can still navigate the menus in your language of choice. With all that being said, my analysis of the Japanese release of Halo Combat Evolve comes to a close. Thanks for watching my video, and if you liked what you saw, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to my channel. Have a good one.